Hi, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development, and we are currently live in the breakout room. So, welcome and welcome, and we love being here for you with quality and value to inspire and to transform. Remember, we are on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and iTunes. Today, as usual, we have a special guest to share with you for your development and growth and to live your better informed life. So, grab a cup, pull up a seat, and stay tuned for the introduction right here now, live in the breakout room. It's the place for health, happiness, and prosperity. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Andy Charles and you are currently live in the breakout room. I am your award-winning and internationally accredited life and development coach. And this is the place because we are your partners for health, happiness and prosperity. Now this. Sales is learnable. Yes, you can be a born salesperson maybe, but it's a learnable skill. So let's focus on that. And again, even if you don't kill it in sales, mm -hmm. the communication, I mean, if, if financially you don't kill it, there's nothing better you can do. Yeah. That, that. Our next guest in the breakout room is Bennett Maxwell. He is the founder of Dirty Do and the owner of Maxwell real estate. Bennett is known as a natural salesman and entrepreneur. This is the man of the moment. He's big on family as we can see here and he will always invite you to have one of these at the dirty door. Bennett is an achiever Professionally, Bennett has built successful sales teams in various industries while also building his real estate portfolio to now 20 plus tenants. Leading from the front by earning the title of top sales rep regularly. This is his engaging smile. So, let's welcome this salesman and entrepreneur live in the breakout room. The man. Bennett Maxwell. Hey, hey. <laughs> welcome, Bennett. Intro. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I, I know, I know you would love it. I know you would love it. You give the inspiration, and I tell all my guests that you guys give the inspiration for the kind of introduction that we have to give to the people on the show. So, welcome again, Bennett. How are you today, my friend? Doing really good. And how about yourself? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking and thanks for taking the time to come and join us on Andy's personal development in the breakout room. So, Bennett, we just want to begin by asking you if you can remember any endearing memories about when you were growing up as a young man. What was Bennett Maxwell like between the ages of, say, six, seven, eight, nine? Can you recall anything at all for us? Six, seven, eight, and nine. So I grew up with uh, there's there's nine kids in my family. Wow. I was, I was probably fighting. I, I had there's seven boys and two brothers. So that's what I remember. Re wrestling with the brothers. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I even at those six, seven, whatever, I was uh, definitely always out on the street hanging out with the neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. I think when you have a parent that has nine kids, maybe after the first four or five, they they stop paying attention to the rest. So I was number oh, seven. Okay. <laughs> so I kind of got to do whatever I want, which was nice. Okay, but, no, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I grew up in uh, in Utah, so uh -huh. good state, a oh. lot, lot of outdoors things to do, always kind of outside running around. All right, so you're a jazz man, right? Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to sport, a bit. But... Oh, okay. So what was your passion growing up, Bennett Ma Ma Maxwell? What was the thing that really drew your attention and uh, helped bring you to where you are today? So, I mean, the big thing that I did focus on when I was younger is, is actually sports. Today, I don't don't watch them, but I did, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I started in Little League, did, you know, softball and then baseball and then soccer. And 
in high school, though, I, I was very competitive in football, rugby, and wrestling. I did those three sports um, okay. each year in high school. So lo- very, very grateful to be a part of those because, man, you learn so many valuable lessons in sports from, yeah. you know, especially like the, the football and slash rugby, the team aspect and working with the team mm-hmm. um, to wrestling that it's like, it's just you. You win, it's on you. You lose, it's on you. There's no excuses. There's no... <laughs> You know, my lineman didn't block for me. Yeah, yeah. The quarterback yeah. didn't throw the ball correctly. Like it's just you. So I, I, I like playing in both of those types of sports, and I feel like it, it really helped me out. All right, great. Thanks for sharing, Bennett. You studied pre med at UVU. Tell mm-hmm. us about that. Yeah, when you know, growing up, people say, "What do you want to be?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I want to be." So. <laughs> Anytime somebody talked about a doctor, though, you you know, it's like, ooh, a doctor. So I, I mm. decided, mm, I'm going to be a doctor. You know, I want to get yeah. that reaction out of people. Right. Not so much. And, and I've, I and I love kids. You know, just growing up with a big family, have tons of nieces and nephews. Mm-hmm. Um, now I have kids of myself, but so I decided to be. I wanted to be a pediatrician, um, okay. and I started going to school. But it was more because I thought it was going to give me a good lifestyle, provide good money. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a baby. Like I, I get queasy with blood. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, I didn't end up finishing college. I was, I mean, I, I had a re- really good grade point average, um, but I ended up leaving college maybe a, a semester before I graduated mm-hmm. uh, to pursue my sales career. Okay, great. And how did that work for you in terms of getting involved in sales and stuff? Oh, it was great. Um, here in Utah, you have a big, push for it's called summer sales here but you're it's college kids and they're recruiting college kids and they say hey during the summer come out we're going to knock doors and sell either pest control or security systems or whatever Mm -hmm. and the goal is to make enough money in those four months to pay for all of your school and your housing and everything like that so you can get through college and it's it's more than possible to do that um there are a lot of people making multiple six figures doing that job so it, it was great i went out I, the first summer I did, I only did two two months because I came mm-hmm. out late. Um, I was recruited kind of halfway through, but it was really good. And I knocked a lot of doors. And uh, the skills that I learned in communicating were really good. When you're cold knocking and you have no idea what's going on behind that door and you have to immediately grab their attention and then sell them a year-long pest control contract, Yeah, right? If you could do that, it, it gives you some confidence. It also gave me the resiliency to accept no for an answer. Right. I mean, I was knocking hundreds of doors a day, like one one Mm -hmm. to 200 doors a day. Yeah. um, Every single day. So anyways, very, very beneficial. And then after that first summer, then I started saying, okay, well, you know, it went really well for me financially. Let's go recruit people. So then my second summer, I recruited 40 guys that I got, you know, 40 young guys plus myself. We all moved to North Carolina and we sold pest control that summer as well, which was just a great, great summer. And after that, it just started rolling. That's what I that's what I got into. Okay, great. Uh, you became former co. You were the former co-owner at Switch to Solar uh, between 2019 and 2021. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, I started so getting into this door-to-door stuff. Um, I was selling different products, and I started selling solar in, in 2019, and it mm-hmm. was great. I loved the product. Yeah, um, I was selling in California. And it's the highest electrical rate. So kind of the pitch is, hey, I'm, you know, you're knocking on a door, you know, what's your electricity bill? Oh, it's $200. I'm going to give you a solar loan instead. So you're no longer going to pay your electricity bill. Uh-huh. And I'm going to lock you in at maybe $90 a month, right. you know, and, and it's like, right. and you don't pay anything for this. You know, it's a, it's a zero down loan. So it's such a good product. I love selling it. It went really well. So mm-hmm. after a few months, I'm like, maybe, you know, maybe I should do this year round rather than just the summer. So we mm-hmm. moved to San Diego. I teamed up with my brother and we moved it online. We did hired some people overseas that would uh, do our marketing and set appointments for us. So somebody would click on a Facebook ad, you know, right, about solar. And then I would show up and, and close the deal. And that went really well. Um, so we decided to start a company, me and my brother. And we started it in our first recruit was January of 2020. Yeah. Yeah, and a year and a half later, we ended up selling the business. Um, it, it was very successful, and and then we saw the potential to exit, so sold the business so I could jump in full time into what I'm doing now, which is the the cookies. All right, great, Bennett. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs having that opportunity that you had with your brother to make that switch 
You mm-hmm. saw a way of exit and you made a profit after you have built something over a certain period of time. That may have taught you some life skills, some survival skills, some business skills. What would you give as advice to many young entrepreneurs who would be willing to do the same but probably don't know how? What would you tell them? There's a book called The E-Myth Revisited. Yeah. That it it's, it's talking about the myth of entrepreneurship, that most entrepreneurs aren't in his mind – a, a true entrepreneur, they just own their own job. Uh-huh. Um, so they're their own boss, but they don't get paid unless they show up to work. And his okay. point is okay. that's not the way to do it, right? You want to build yeah. a business that has per- residual income. And the way to do that mm-hmm. is day one of your business, you make your organization chart. Okay. So you make your whole org, org chart of what you think the company is going to look like in two, three, four, five years from now. So mm-hmm. in solar, it was, you know, you have the CEO and then you have the CFO, and then you have this uh, a VP of sales, and then a sales manager, and then you have uh, sales reps, right? And setters and closers, whatever. So it was kind of silly to, of an exercise to do because it was just me and my brother, but we built up this big organization chart with, you know, 20, 30 people in it. And we just uh-huh. put our heads in every single one of them. And then okay. the goal is replace yourself, um, you know, one position at a time until you uh. work your way completely out of the business. Now, once you're out of the business, that business is going to run by itself because you have all the key players. Um, And then now that's a a very sellable business. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for sharing, Bennett. Sounds interesting. How did you get involved in real estate? Um, I was lucky enough that these these guys that I was was doing the summer sales for, they -hmm. were very big into getting into real estate and how to do that. So my first summer, I sold for those two months. I came home with like twenty five thousand dollars, and with that, I got my first property um, for nine grand. So okay. just figuring out, like, you don't need fifty thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars to buy your first property. And in my case, I bought a, a condo, um, mm-hmm. and it was two hundred twenty thousand dollars. I put only three and a half percent down, got an FHA loan, and then had the seller play the closing costs. So with that little amount of money, I was able to get into real estate. I'm like, oh, this is, you know, it's a much lower barrier to entry. Now, $9,000 was what it cost. I didn't even pay $9,000. I couldn't Mm -hmm. qualify for the home. Instead, I partnered with a brother that could Uh qualify for the home and he, and we split it 50, 50. So that's kind of how I did my, my first thing. It cost $4,500 and I didn't even have any credit, but I partnered with uh, the right person that, that did have it. I just had to find the deal and do the legwork. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing, Bennett. That's wonderful. What about Dirty Dough? How did that happen? How did that drop into your lap? Yeah, Dirty Dough was a company started by um, a friend from high school. So Mm -hmm. I actually didn't start the company. Um, It was he was doing cookie deliveries out of his apartment Mm -hmm. and wanted to open up an actual retail storefront. So he was looking for some investment money, posted on Facebook. I saw him. I gave him some investment money for him to open up the actual retail location. Yeah. And then maybe nine months, eight months after the retail location opened, he was just burnt out. He definitely wasn't practicing the E-Myth revisited. Like he was, mm-hmm. you know, working the 80, 100 hour weeks in the store at all times and just completely burnt out. So wow. when he was looking to sell it, I said, you know, what, what the heck? <laughs> Um, I've, I've never even worked in food before, uh, okay. but I thought, you know, let, let, let's give it a go. I saw another, there's other cookie companies that were doing really, really well. And I thought, mm-hmm. you know, let, let, let me try my luck on it. So I, I purchased it, uh, January of 2021. So I've had it for just under 18 months now. Right. Wonderful. And how did you manage to sort of, I wouldn't say double or triple, but you increase the ability of this so that you went to well, like what twenty states or so, increasing the the rapid growth of Dirty Do. How did you accomplish that? What was the the business technique or the marketing technique that you did to increase that level of business? Um, being a salesperson, it's always you know finding being a professional salesperson. It's all about finding problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the, the true problem and then solving that problem. So that's kind of okay. what I applied to this business. This yeah. business only had one location. Um, so when I took over, you know, I saw this one location and I thought, well, what are the issues with this one location? And it was basically waste and labor. So oh. I developed, um, 
a system that greatly reduces both of those, both both waste and labor mm-hmm. by centralizing all the production. So rather than making the cookies on site, we make them off site, mm-hmm. use machines uh, yeah. rather than doing everything by hand. So it greatly mm-hmm. reduces that that labor as well as now if we're centralizing all of our purchasing to one centralized you know warehouse, our costs okay. are much less. And then we're using these ginormous machines so our quality control increases. Anyways, it was all about developing the model. We mm-hmm. developed the model and then we started selling franchises in December. So as of today, we still only have that one location open, but we've sold mm-hmm. 60 franchises. Our first five are opening next month in June. Okay. So it was Great. really about finding the correct model and then finding uh-huh. the correct team. Because I just told you, you know, I'm not in food and franchising. So I did <laughs> hire somebody um, yeah. as CEO yeah. that knows yeah. what she's doing. She grew her own brand. Okay. It was called Maui Waui Smoothies and Coffee, and she grew that to just under 700 locations and sold it. So I thought, man, if she's done it before with another brand, maybe mm-hmm. she can help me in my company. So okay. a, mixture, a mixture of the two. Right. You you are considered, Bennett, as one tough cookie. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's, that's ironic. But I'm looking here. You are a member of the Forbes Business Council, Apex Executives, and the Power Room. You have mm-hmm. been able to make a powerful impression as a young man early in your entrepreneurial career. And, and how did you manage to make such an impression that you have the opportunity to be members on these uh, executive um, organizations? How did you do it? Um, a lot of it is is just the, the power of networking and kind of talking to people. So like the, the power room specifically was uh, I was at an event and one of the speakers was talking about something that very, you know, was very intriguing to me. So mm-hmm. I went and addressed him afterwards and started talking with them. And then it turned out to like some big breakout session. You know, maybe there's 30 people listening in a conversation. And yeah. then he invited me to to that, the power room event. So I went to that and I'm like, oh, this is great. So I ended up joining. But just kind of getting out of getting out of your comfort zone and networking with the right people, mm-hmm. asking them, introducing yourself, kind of just making yourself known. And then the people you know, like-minded people are just, you know, you're bound to kind of collide with them. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. How do you see the future for Dirty Do? What is the plans going forward in terms of expansion? Do you look at, at possibly going international or is it just going to be uh, domestic? What are your plans for Dirty Do going forward in the future? Yeah, we, we in, in the next four to five years, we want about 750 retail locations. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, we'll have mobile locations as well. So these are mobile f- food trucks or food trailers that you're taking to events. Um, we definitely want to take it international. I don't think it'll be international in the next four to five years, but maybe maybe you know a few years after that. But my big goal is to you know have several hundred of these reach reach the thousand store mark because I feel like when we get to that point and as we get to that point we have the potential to impact a lot of people Mm -hmm. um and dirty dough is if you look at our cookies like i mean you showed one of our one of those cookies it's a (laughs) three-layer cookie so it looks like a chocolate cookie you Uh break it open it's a chocolate chip cookie in the middle and in the very center there's you know hot fudge so it's all about the inside and Mm -hmm. that's the message that we want to give off um with this mental health crisis going on you know there's the suicide rates and self-harm rates in kids have over doubled in social media Okay, because people are, you know, you have your normal imperfect life and you compare it to somebody else's Instagram life, right? Their perfect Mm -hmm. life. And then you feel bad about yourself Mm -hmm. and it causes anxiety and depression, all that. So dirty dough, we're focusing on mental health in kids and teaching them what's on the inside matters most. So that's like my big mission is to spread that message. And then we're also on, on the nonprofit side, We're building wellness centers in um, middle schools and high schools to educate kids about mental health and teach them about mindfulness and happiness mindset, meditation, breathing exercise, things like that. Okay. Is that cookies for a cause? Yes. Uh, No. We haven't decided on the name. I wanted Uh that name, but somebody else has it. So (laughs) I wasn't able to get that name for the the nonprofit. So we're just setting it up right now. I mean, I'm thinking about... uh, uh, thinking up some other names right now. Okay, great. Wonderful. Who is your mentor, Bennett? 
If you had to point out someone that you say would be a driving force behind the things that you do or someone when you need to clear your thoughts and make proper decisions, is there that one person that you turn to, a coach, a mentor, someone that you you know would be there for you, basically mm-hmm. when you need to hear that still and steady voice? Yeah, on the business side, it's definitely been my senior advisor. His name's John Richards. Mm-hmm. Met him doing, I took his startup, like an entrepreneurship course, Actually, uh-huh. after, just after I sold my solar company. So I thought, oh, I just built and sold a company. You know, I, I probably know most of this stuff. I didn't know any of it. So mm. <laughs> I took his course and he's been in business for much longer than I have. He took a company public back in like 2000 and since then has invested in like 100 companies. So somebody with that experience and, and to, you know, to kind of have it at your fingertips, man, it's been so, mm-hmm. so rewarding and so beneficial to have somebody like that kind of in your corner. Okay. Sounds good. What is your why? What is your big why? That the is, why. yeah, what it is that gets you up in the morning and gives you the impetus to go through the day. What's the big why for you, Bennett? Um, my big why is I have the potential. If we've sold 60 of these in, you know, five, six months, I think we can get to a thousand stores. So if we have a thousand stores, that means we have hundreds of franchisees that we uh-huh. can potentially benefit their families by providing them a very easy to run sustainable, profitable business model. Okay. So that's kind of how I, you know, I'm I'm trying to serve my franchisees. And then I have all my employees and the employees of my franchisees, Mm -hmm. which are typically females between 16 and 22 years old. That's who works at Uh a cookie store. And that's who's being affected by the mental health crisis the most. So we pay for a program at a corporate level for all employees and the employees of our franchisees to -hmm. give them access to a life coach, whether that be in, you know, uh, quality sleep or eating healthy or um, financial stress or reaching your peak potential. Like there's 50 different things that they get to choose or, yeah. you know, the basic ones, anxiety, depression, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, and they get to be paired up with somebody. So I think that I have the potential to through this model, you know, help, you know, if we have a thousand stores, that's 20,000 employees to give them access to, um, to a life coach to help them out on the mental health side. And then the last customer that we serve is kind of our end user who's buying our cookies. And it's really spreading that message of what's on the inside matters most. Life doesn't have to be perfect for Mm -hmm. for you to be happy, right? And and too often we see people flying in planes or whatever, you know, driving the fancy car. And we're like, if only I had that, I would be happy. (laughs) But that's definitely not Uh, the way to think, right? You need to think, I need to be happy now and Mm -hmm. happiness is a choice. Yes. So really spreading that message of, uh, and, and that's all about mental health, right? Mentally, mm-hmm. if you're trained on that, you can train yourself to be more happy rather than focusing on the wrong things. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing, Bennett. That was inspirational. Thanks a lot. What kind of adjustments did you all have to make, uh, business and personal, with regards to the negative aspects of the pandemic? Um. <clears throat> With solar, we were already doing a lot of it online. So we Mm -hmm. were door knocking as well. So we definitely had to stop door knocking. And then Mm -hmm. we had to train our sales reps to learn how to now be sales reps over the phone and follow up. So it was all about taking a sales rep that's typically a sales rep is disorganized, kind of ADHD, right? And teaching them, okay, when a lead comes in, you have to call them immediately. You have to put them in this software and you have to develop a whole process. So we got much more process oriented when the pandemic Mm -hmm. hit in the solar business Mm -hmm. and the cookie business, um, it was more focused on delivery. So we had to do that shift of like, Hey, these will be delivered to your door. We'll put a little sticker on them for safety, things like that. Um, but those are the two, two shifts that we did. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. We have the man Bennett Maxwell, who is known as a natural salesman live in the breakout room. We're going to go quickly for ad break and we're going to come back with Bennett Maxwell live in the breakout room. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. FindRadioGuest.com The place to click to find guests to interview for free. And if you're a radio show booker, podcaster, talk show host, or television producer, then this is the place to get podcasts and radio interviews or promote your books and products as a guest expert sponsor. Find radioguest.com. Check it out.
Hi people, this is a special invitation for you to join our community. Yes, we're inviting you to join our community for 2022. What's in store? Well, what we want is your feedback on our content and our guests, but more so on what you need to be inspired and transformed from your current condition to one of happiness, health, and prosperity. So drop us a line and reach out. Help us to better help you achieve your goals. So, people, inbox me at www.facebook.com slash mddreamer slash. That's www.facebook.com slash mddreamer slash. Or send me an email at lovebitsa at gmail.com. That's lovebitsa at gmail.com. We love hearing from you as we build our partnership in growth and development. And we look forward to your communicating. Help us to help you to live a better life in personal growth and development from Andy's personal development. We love you. We look forward to hearing from you. See you soon. Bye for now. And we are back in the breakout room live with the man, Bennett Maxwell, the natural salesman. Bennett, it says that you have built successful sales teams in various industries. Could you tell us some of the people that you've worked with over that period of time and what level of success they may have achieved with your help? Yeah, so the first one I, I mentioned at the beginning, it was that... Uh, the, it was a pest control company, and we mm -hmm. yeah we recruited four, 40 guys, where I recruited forty guys right. um, to come out there, and man, we were all we were all brand new. So okay. that was a really good experience taking somebody that's never had that financial success and showing them how they can make you know hundred uh, you know five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars in a day by mm -hmm. just cold knocking doors. After right. that, I moved to uh, satellite. I sold mm -hmm. Direct TV and AT and T internet. Same thing, building the teams. Um, then I moved to a company called Vivint. It's the largest door-to-door -door company, at least in the United States, probably in the world, uh -huh. um, with several thousand sales reps. But they do uh, security systems and smart home systems, um, like you know, doorbell cameras, things like that. Uh, okay. And that was that was awesome, very successful. And then I moved to the to the solar. So those were the okay. kind of the the transition, slowly getting to a higher ticket item each each step. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks for sharing, Bennett. When you look at what is happening in the world today, I mean, there are so many things that are not going right. Mm -hmm. um, all the sanctions that has to be put on Russia, unfortunately, for what is happening in Ukraine and all the fallout from the COVID-19 thing with, with, with jobs being lost, businesses having to close and so on. What advice would you give to people to sort of maintain uh, a level and a positive focus and make them feel like, there is still hope. All is not lost. Despite what is happening in the world, despite where we see things are heading, there is still a better way in which we can live and survive together. What kind of advice would you give to them, Bennett? My advice might, people might not love it, but um, I, I kind of ignore all of that. I, I think okay. there's, uh, like I, I'm not, a, I don't watch new, the news. I don't do the news uh, articles. What's happening somewhere else is whether it's great or whether it's terrible, typically doesn't really affect my day to day other than mm -hmm. my attitude of me thinking, wow, this world is shitty. And I don't <laughs> want to think that. So instead I kind of leave all that to the side and focus on myself and what I control can control. Cause what makes me excited is not mm -hmm. thinking about a war, but it's how many people can I help? How many wellness rooms can we build? Right. Yeah. How many services can we provide? Yeah. Um, and then a, an, an exercise that I do, I try to do it daily. I have a, a reminder on my phone. Um, mm -hmm. but let's just write down five things that you're grateful for. Okay. You know, what went well? Um, it's part of that, that apex mastermind that I'm, that I'm a part of, but mm -hmm. it's five things that you're grateful for. And then what went well today? What did you, what did you learn today? What did yeah. you spend your time on today? Where your focus mm -hmm. on today? And that's it. I mean, that's, that's all I ask, but every day just doing that and focusing on the positive yeah um man it changes your mood yeah thanks for sharing bennett appreciate that would you consider writing a book at some point in time in the future yeah um <laughs> if i can find <laughs> someone to help me out that's that's a, it's, it's the time right 
Yes. No, I, I feel like I, I think that's something that I would, I would definitely like to do um, is just finding the time. And uh, I, I want to maybe prove out myself a little bit more, I mm -hmm. guess. Maybe that's a, a something that isn't the best thing to say, but I, I mean, you know, because it's it could be a continual spiral of like, oh, once I get my next thing, then I'll do it. Then mm -hmm. I get my next thing. Mm -hmm. But that's I'm I'm still caught in that cycle. When I when I get my next achievement, then I'd like to write a book. So we'll we'll yes, uh, who knows when though? <laughs> Great. I'm interested to know how you balance your time in terms of your commitment to the business, family life, and of course, time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in any other activities, maybe social activities, any clubs, any groups, stuff like that? Yeah. So balancing time, I do a, a pretty even, you know, even being a business owner and having the flexibility, I stick to a pretty, you know, strict nine to five schedule. Mm -hmm. um, I plan a lunch every single day. I block off a lunch every day in my calendar. And then mm -hmm. I go to lunch with somebody, whether it's my friends or somebody for business. Okay. Um, I have a hard stop, though, at five. And that's family time. I do family dinner every night at six o'clock. I have three wow. young kids. Yes. So, it's not, you know, anyways, they're five, three and one, but it's at six o'clock. We're, we're, we're home and, and we're eating together. I do a date night every Friday night. We have a, a babysitter come over and it's always just, you know, me and my wife. And then almost every night, <laughs> every other <laughs> night we do, uh -huh. I do a, a date night with my, with my two daughters, the five and the three year old. Last night we got ice cream. The night before that we went to the dollar store and they got, you uh -huh. know, one of them got like a, a ball and the other one got some makeup kit, you know? Wow. So really trying to do, uh, have those, I just run off systems and, and schedules. So mm -hmm. Friday night is blocked off. It's date night. Every night at six o'clock is, is dinner every day at, you know, 12 o'clock is lunch. And that's, you know, a social time for me, even if it's through business, it's overeating. And I feel like it's a little bit more laid back. Okay. Myself personally, I uh, like pickleball, which is mm -hmm. kind of like if you've ever heard of that. I don't know. It's it's. I I did yes, I did hear okay. about it. So I've I've been playing that and uh, part of some groups doing that, and it's and it's a blast. And then just okay. my friend group, I've I've been part of the same group of ten guys since elementary. So we went to elementary, then we went to junior high, and then we went to mm -hmm. high school, and mm -hmm. we're all still buddies. So we have a poker night tonight. So <laughs> just stay, staying <laughs> close with the people that you know, that, that you love and care the most. Yeah. Thank you, Bennett. I'm hearing a whole lot of consistency and organization in your life. And I'm thinking, is it possible that you could work with some of the schools in your area to deal with the young people? I know that you're dealing with the mental health stuff. That's a challenge by itself. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a scholarship program, is it something that you think you probably look into to get involved for your business model and your personal model, the way you manage your time and yourself? It's really consistent. And yeah. it's something that I think a whole lot of people is lacking in the world today, but particularly the young people who are looking to make uh, uh, career choices and do the things that would give them a fulfilling life. Have you considered something of that nature? I haven't put too much thought into it. Now, we're building these wellness rooms and a wellness room mm -hmm. is converting an old classroom into something that doesn't appear to be a school. And it's a okay. place that people can take a break and learn about their mental health right. and watch right. videos and things like that. Now, one of the wellness centers that I toured, um, mm -hmm. they use that same room as like in, you know, for after school programs. Yeah. So that is definitely something that, you know, as you're thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, well, we already have the room. Now we just need some, you know, it could be like an after, like in the day, it's the wellness room focused on mental health, but maybe after it's focused on organization or being your best self or being, um, you know, in, investment, financial knowledge, credit, whatever. And we could, yeah, I, I mean, I like that idea. I'm really passionate about that. I okay. felt like I got really lucky in life by being taught the right things by the right people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kind of being in the right spot at the right time. And I would love to give that back as much as possible. Great. Thanks for sharing, Bennett. You have had a very strong and engaging personality thus far. And I see that as being a catalyst that has helped you a lot to be successful in business as well as in your personal life. But you also would have faced some challenges. What are some of the things that you would say to people uh, who are in a similar position to yours with regards to those challenges? What are some of the things that they would meet in terms of challenges? And how do you suggest that they handle them? Because it will not always be smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. You said you had many no's and many doors you'd have knocked yeah. on. But what is the mindset that keeps you going 
despite the no's, despite the setbacks? Um, probably the biggest mindset when, you know, if you knock doors for, I, I did it for six or seven years, mm -hmm. knocking a hundred plus doors a day. It's a yeah. lot of no's. I mean, right. Tens right. of thousands of no's. And my focus has always been on what am I learning and how am I personally improving? If I focus mm -hmm. on crap, I didn't make money today or I didn't mm -hmm. make money on that door, then yeah. it is very depressing. But if it's that person didn't, you know, choose to buy from me mm -hmm. um, or didn't want my product because one, it just wasn't good timing or it wasn't good fit. But what am I going to change about myself and learn and improve about myself for the next door? And when you focus on that, like, man, I didn't get any sales today, but I learned to overcome three new objections or okay. I knew, you know, and, and it's really focusing on that personal development side mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what I got out of it rather than what was taken away from me. So even you lose money, right? You, you pay somebody that screws you over that they kind of scam <laughs> you. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. well, what can I do in the future to avoid that? Right. And then you tell yourself the answer and then you go, cool. I just learned something new. So I think a lot of it is, is that. And the other thing is, we we see these big companies and or successful people and we always think like oh man it, it must have been smooth selling but just like mm. you said like that's not the case so yes. i listened to a podcast it was called business wars mm -hmm. and it just goes through the story of you know coca-cola versus pepsi or uh blockbuster versus netflix or yeah. fedex versus uh ups and then yeah. you realize fedex almost went bankrupt the dude the owner of fedex flew to vegas he had like $6,000 left, but he had $20,000 in payroll. I don't know the numbers, but something along hmm. those lines. Okay. And he flew to Vegas and he gambled it till he had enough money to pay payroll. And if he didn't wow. make enough money, he was going to mm -hmm. shut the doors. But it's like okay. all these big companies were on the verge of bankruptcy. Right. I read the book, the book Nike, uh, the shoe dog, the owner of Nike. Same thing. Yeah. Like they almost went out uh, under because, I mean, like a thousand times, but they just kept pushing. So knowing yes. that everybody struggles and that it's normal, even the all-stars struggle, then yeah. it's like, you know, it's, it's just a period of time. Let's keep pushing. Let's focus on what we're learning and maybe it'll work out. Hmm. Yeah, that's important. You know, it reminds me of the, the Thomas Edison story mm -hmm. where he would have tried just about 999 times <laughs> before he got it right with the light bulb. Or yeah. maybe it's the Kodak story. After over 100 years, they were suddenly facing going out of business. And all they needed to do was to switch in times with the technology that was happening around them. So, yeah, I, I understand the concept. You've got to have that kind of mindset. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're not just you're just going to make it. You're just going to fall out or, or, or disappear or something like that. So that's wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Bennett. When you look at the future in terms of what's happening in the economy, are there any contingency plans that you and your company are, are looking at in terms of um, – financial assistance, things that will be able to help you create more inventory and stuff and even probably more employment? Um, looking at the economy right now, I mean, it's definitely stocks, crypto, everything's down right now. And it yeah, looks like yeah, it's going yeah. down. In the US, the interest rates are, are rising. They've doubled and yeah. like the, the, they've risen the fastest they've ever risen and in, in, in ever. So right. yeah, that definitely could cause some worry. Um, but I kind of sleep good at night thinking mm -hmm. the model that we built is yeah. built to last. It's built to be, to survive off of low sales because it's all on low overhead, mm -hmm. low labor, you know, by centralizing everything. So, okay. I guess, yeah, it's, it's, it's worrisome, but at the same time, like that's when I, when I built the model of dirty dough, I didn't want something that would thrive off of high sales and only off mm -hmm. of high sales. I wanted something that would be around for 40 years, similar to Mrs. Fields Cookies, which is another franchise, okay, another okay. cookie company that has been around for 40 years. And they do this mm -hmm. centralized model that that you know that we that we've mimicked. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. I want to just run that very short tape that you saw uh, in the introduction. And I want you to elaborate on what you're saying because there's a sort of dichotomy between someone saying he was a born salesman or Maybe not. He just learned as life went on and then realized, hey, I can sell. So let me just play it again. And you're is learnable. Elaborate. Yes, you can be a born salesperson, maybe, but it's a learnable skill. So let's focus on that. And again, even if you don't kill it in sales, mm -hmm. the communication, I mean, if, if financially, you don't kill it. There's nothing better you can do. Yeah, that, that is the foundation. Right. Just elaborate yeah. on that a bit for us, Bennett. 
So I would, uh, when I was, when I'd recruit people and some people are like, oh, I'm just not a salesperson. And I'm like, well, what, what, what is a sales? How is a salesperson born? Like, what does a baby salesperson look like? Mm, right. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? Like I wasn't an extrovert growing up. I didn't, you know, I had my group of friends, but I didn't go, nobody would define me as an extrovert. Um, so yeah, I, but I was good at talking to people, but did I know how to ask the right questions mm -hmm. and tell the difference between what was it, an actual concern and what was just like a, a, a baloney concern or a smoke screen, right? No, I had to be trained yeah. on all of that and okay. body language and the speed at which you talk and the fluctuation of your voice. Nobody's born with that. So <laughs> it's once you, once you say I'm not a born salesman, you're taking away all of the control that you have to be a salesperson, right? And you're just saying, sorry, not, not in my control. Mm. When you rephrase it and look at sales profession, just like any profession, because that's how it is, it's learnable, right? Nobody's born knowing how to be a doctor or a lawyer or a coder. Maybe somebody's better at you know, electronics, but that doesn't make them a professional coder. They, right. they have to learn. So just yes. knowing that it it's learnable and that anybody can learn it just like anybody can learn pretty much anything, mm -hmm. then it puts the power back into your court and then you can actually learn and make those changes. Great. Thanks for sharing. Wonderful. I appreciate that. We're about to end our show. This episode has been very absorbing and a lot of information, vital stuff, valuable stuff you have shared with us. Bennett, we want to thank you so far. What would be your parting message to the world if you had the opportunity to say one more thing to the universe? What would it be for you? Um, try to... I mean, it, it, it kind of goes right with your 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 podcast with with the happiness. But man, we chase after the wrong things. We ch we chase yeah. after the the wealth, the money, the fame, and even small amounts of success that everybody's experienced with those. You can see that the happiness doesn't last. Okay. Um, so really changing that mindset of I can be happy with who I am, how mm -hmm. I am, um, and I don't need the next thing to make me happy because man, that's what we all chase for. Once I get the next property, once I get the next business, once I get the next raise, once I get the next whatever, then I'm going to be happy. And your happiness goes up and then it goes right back down to your normal mm -hmm. level. So yeah, really yeah. finding joy in the day-to-day -day of life and not the achievements is, is definitely the advice I would give. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. That was surely inspirational coming from the man, Bennett, Bennett Maxwell, a natural salesman, the CEO and founder of Dirty Do. So we're going to give Bennett uh, a minute or two to just share with you his social handles. If you need him to share with you his business model, if you need to try and get that franchise in your corner, Bennett is now going to let you know how you can make contact with him. So Bennett, you are on screen now. Awesome. Uh, you can go to my website. It's bennettmaxwell.com. Uh, so B-E-N-N-E-T-T -T, Maxwell, M-A-X-W-E-L-L.com. And there you can inquire more about the franchises and, and, and look at kind of the modeling and the financings available for, to own and operate a franchise, but also just following me on social media, on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. I, I try to post every day some good content, what's going on in the business, as well as my personal life. And then you can also subscribe there for uh, In the Trenches report. I send out an email um, every few weeks of what's going good, what's going bad in uh kind of in the trenches, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the business. All right, great. That was the man, the natural salesman, Bennett Maxwell of Dirty Do, sharing his life, his information, his experience, his purpose, and his desire for the future, and his fulfillment to take his rightful place in the world and provide quality. Uh, he's doing a lot of work dealing with young people and uh, mental illnesses as they are challenged with that so kudos to you bennett and your family and your people for the great stuff that you've been doing it's been wonderful spending this time with you we are now saying bye for now until the next time on andy's personal development we are live in the breakout room with the man bennett maxwell so we say to you keep the love going keep the faith going be positive and remain safe wherever you are for now we are saying god bless Godspeed, shalom, namaste. Until next time, this is Andy saying so long. See you soon, guys.